your Catholic Daily Journal for Tuesday, March the 5th, 2019. It's Mardi Gras, a French phrase meaning Fat Tuesday that signifies the day before Lent, which begins at midnight on Ash Wednesday. Lent is a time of fasting and penance, and Ash Wednesday is a day of mandatory fasting and abstinence from meat. In years past, every day of Lent was a day of abstinence from meat, and before refrigeration, Meat simply couldn't be stored for six weeks of Lent or even until the Sundays when it could be eaten freely. And as such, it was necessary both to empty the larder of anything which couldn't be stored safely until Easter, and it was necessary to fatten oneself up because Lent was going to take off the pounds. The carnival, a word which means farewell to meat, arose as a practical thing, which became cultural. In southern Louisiana and Alabama, all of Carnival is called Mardi Gras, and the Tuesday before Ash Wednesday is the completion of a series of traditions which began with the queen of the crew of Rex riding a trolley car on the evening of January the 6th, the Feast of Epiphany. Today, the crew of Rex will have lunch at Antoine's in the French Quarter. They'll enjoy Orster's Rockefeller, which was invented there. They'll get their blessing from the priest, and the parade will roll down St. Charles Avenue. At midnight, thousands of New Orleans police and sanitation workers will walk slowly from one edge of the French Quarter all the way to the other, telling people to go home and literally cleaning the streets of people and of trash and making the city ready to begin Lent on Ash Wednesday morning. Today in 1946, Sir Winston Churchill was addressing Westminster College in Missouri in the United States, and he said two words that would change the vocabulary of diplomacy for decades. He described the ideological border between the democratic West and the communist East as an iron curtain. Churchill was a brilliant orator. He affected a kind of stammering speech that made him seem so passionate that his mouth simply couldn't contain all the vigor. The stammering effect was amplified by his unusual method of speaking in fours. He would typically describe something using two couplets of two words. Most orators follow the rule of threes or of fives when speaking because it's easier for the human brain to memorize sets of three or five. But Churchill's mastery of the poetic aspects of English was legendary and his wit was sharp as a knife. And the way that he spoke with the stammering and the couplets allowed him to think on the fly and to speak improvisationally with a remarkable sense of poetry. The phrase Iron Curtain would be pounced on by journalists in the US and the UK and would be part of our shared vocabulary all the way until the mid-1990s when the USSR and the Cold War really came to an end. The key piece in the collapse of the Iron Curtain wasn't Churchill and it wasn't ideology. It was the death today in 1953 of Joseph Stalin. The longest serving leader of the Soviet Union was one of the top five mass murderers in human history, on par with Genghis Khan and Mao Zedong. Four days before his death today, he fell into a coma, probably as a result of a cerebral hemorrhage, and he lingered briefly. He died at his Volinskodakha in Moscow, and while the Communist Party took the opportunity to canonize the man, many on both sides of the Iron Curtain breathed a sigh of relief. In his later life, Stalin had become increasingly paranoid and had taken to liquidating, his word, entire military units or whole neighborhoods of cities and villages without any evident reason at all. It's not as if he declined into this lunacy. He was always a murderer, but it had gotten worse and worse over time, and no one was safe from his unhinged wrath. He was the worst of humanity in the 20th century. And he's a reminder that our technology has not made us more enlightened, merely more powerful. Human nature never changes. Joseph Stalin died today in 1953. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. Until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.